Hello everyone. Let's look into the topic of OCV that is on chip variation and this is a very frequently asked questions in the VLSI interviews. So what we'll do is the way we have designed this module is that we'll first identify the various sources of variation on the chip and then we'll try to relate those things in terms of percentages. So let's begin before wasting any time let's begin the, with that topic. So the first source, sources of variation is the etching process. So etching is a basically a fabrication step. It's a very important fabrication step and the etching is the process that actually defines your structure it defines the width and the height of your structures so it's very important this particular st uh, stage is very important and defining and based on the structures that gets defined by this process it directly impacts your delay and we'll look into how does this process will directly impact the delay of a cell okay so let's begin with that so we have this single inverter so let's first look into how the etching process can affect the behavior of a single inverter and that can be always propagated to the behavior of any logic cell because CMOS inverter is the basic building block behind any of the logic cell so this inverter if you try to open it it will look it will have PMOS at the top and NMOS at the bottom that's that these are the transistors but if you deep dive into the transistors if you see these are this is nothing but the PMOS diffusion area or the P diffusion area this is the N diffusion area area and this is the polysilicon gate and these are all metal lines so this is the basically fabrication elements of the transistors okay so if you try to look into the layout of this particular inverter it looks something like this so you have a p diffusion region which is of some width and height you have this poly area polysilicon area which is of certain width and height you had this input and output so basically blue lines it indicates the metals over here the green indicates the P diffusion, the, the uh, yellow indicates the N diffusion area, the red color indicates the polysilicon area and yeah and, and these are the contacts, the black uh, the black cross that you see these are nothing but your contacts. So each particular color identifies each metal layer. So for example this let's say, let's say for example this is metal 1 this could be the green color could be metal 2 the, uh, the, the, or, uh, the yellow color could be metal 3 and this could be metal 4 and so on. So each particular each particular uh, color indicates a particular metal layer okay and how this how do we get this particular shapes on, on this on each and every metal layer that is through etching that that's basically the etching process the etching process will define this structures that you see if it's a rectangular it will be decided by the etching process it will be decided how well the etching has been done okay and if you look into this particular gate so this is your P MOS gate and this area is your N MOS gate and this is the gate length usually I have talked about the term gate length so this is the gate length this basically defines at which node you are whether you are at 20 nanometer or 30 nanometer or 40 nano 45 nanometer 65 nanometers so this is that particular node that will decide at which at which technology node you are in okay and this is the width of the uh, of the uh, of the gate so there is something called as w by l ratio we have been always seeing this w by l in any of the equations so this is the uh, this is the width so basically width identifies the overlap area the overlap area of the gate on the on the p diffusion region so that is what defined defines your width okay so with all that basic things in in mind let's look into this is this was the single inverter let's look into a, a chain of inverter okay what happens when we try to fabricate a chain of inverter so let's say this is the chain of inverter and uh, this is the input or this is the output or this could be also a part of your data path so for example there could be a flip-flop which is sitting over here okay there could be a flip-flop which is sitting over here and this could be a part of your data path or this can also be a part of your clock path this could be the clock port and this could be the D flip-flop pin or whatever this can be a part of any of your circuit and this is how it looks like so if you try to fabricate this this particular inverter chain this is how it will look like okay so let's look into one of the elements let's take this particular element out of the out of the circuit and see how you how it how well it will get fabricated so ideally if you see if there had been a very ideal mask ideal fabrication scenario this is how the structure would have been looked like okay but in real case scenario because we are always dealing with real elements in a fabrication process so fabrication is basically a lab where you have you have a lot of things you have chemicals running you have water you have there, there, are, there are gases running so those things are all there in the fabrication lab due to those effects the structure the ideal structure which had been like this can look like this it can look distorted and the etching this the the uh, the, the 
the edge the edges of this particular mask how well defined are these edges that will be defined by our etching process so let's say the etching process that we did that creates a mask which is something like this okay so if you see the l over here it's, it's the shape is a bit distorted even the w sh shape is a bit distorted so ideally it would have to look like this but now it, it looks something like this so one impact that you see if you see the overlap area if you see the area of this particular section is w into l that is it has got let's say some area w into l and this will be w dash l dash the area will be different because if you see the edges over here the edges are not well structured compared to this one so this will have a well defined area but this will not have a well defined area okay and and on the other hand you will have a length which is like this you have a width which is like this so if you try to calculate the actual length over here and if you try to calculate the actual length over here they will differ for from with with some amount okay so this is one of the one of the variation and if in this case if this is a small variation that we see on one inverter just imagine if there, if there are if, the, if there are so many inverters that are connected back to back the amount of variations that you will see so you will see this kind of variations a lot happening on a chain of inverter which is fabricated on a chip okay and that to not only a small area because the chip is being getting fabricated on a larger area so we'll find similar kind of distortions basically the distortions are, are not they are not repetitive there could be a different kind of distortion for this inverter there could be a different kind of distortion for this inverter and so on okay so let's look into another inverter so for example if you look into this particular section the center area the gates in the middle have got same structure either side okay so for example this gate this gate has got an inverter over here it has got an inverter over here so it's very likely that this particular gate structures will have a repeated distortion which looks something like this because they are exposed to same kind of structures so while fabricating this one you fabricate the near the the, the nearest gate which is again an inverter okay that's the advantage of being in the middle side but if you see on the on this particular edges this particular inverters and these inverters are connected uh, might be connected to some flops or some different structures so basically like something like this i said that this could be a part of your data path and as a result of that this invert the inverters at these sides could be connected to a different structure so in that process if you see a variation of something like this at the center you might see a very different variation at for, for the for the gates that are sitting on either side and it could be something like this if you see over here it could be something like this okay so it is possible that the gates in the middle will have structure something like this and it's possible the gates towards the end will have structure modified not similar to ones which we have at the center and these are all because of because of various structures that is sitting over here so the structure that is sitting over here and that is getting fabricated will impact this particular gate the structure that is sitting over here and that is getting fabricated will impact this particular gate while fabricating whereas these structures are all bounded by inverters on either side so you'll get a very periodic structure over here but towards the sides you might get something like this so this is one one uh, one uh, sources of variation now how does this w and l affects what does that actually affects okay so if you look into the drain current equation of uh, of an inverter of a, of a mosfet of a single mosfet so this is the drain current inversion it's like a mu c ox c ox is the oxide capacitance w by l the gate voltage minus the subtract voltage multiplied with the drain to source voltage minus vds square by 2 so this is the basically drain current equation of any of any gate or of any mosfet of a, or of any transistor so if you see the drain current is directly related to your w by l so any variation that you see in the w and the l will directly impact the drain current so now the question is how does impacting of the drain current impacts your delay of the inverter we'll be looking into that that is a very interesting point that we have to bring it over here so in the first of all we have we are not done with the sources of variation this is one source of variation that we saw and saw its impact on the drain current in the next video what we'll be doing is we'll look into another sources of variation which is the oxide thickness we'll see how does the oxide thickness affects your drain current and how does the drain current eventually affects your delay so let's try to bring up all all of this in the next video thank you